Hello again, friends. It's time once more for In Other News. And this is some news that I know ain't nobody heard of. It kind of snuck in over the weekend. Wasn't reported hardly at all in the United States. But I'm telling you, this is a big, big, big story. And it's got something to do with where Hillary Clinton was on Saturday. Well, today is Sunday, April 1st. Happy April Fool's Day. And this is not an April Fool's fake Professor Plaidcast. This is the real deal. There's a whole lot of stuff going down this week, actually this weekend and this week, that I, I think I'm going to have to do a podcast every day just to keep up with the hot events. Uh, before I get to uh, what Hillary Clinton was up to this weekend, just quickly, uh, 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 Aung San Suu Kyi's political party, and her, I believe, won the elections in Burma. Yay! Good day for democracy. Great day for Aung San Suu Kyi, our friend we Skyped with last semester. And a uh, perhaps even better day for Burma if the elections stick. Uh, two, there's getting ready to be a huge... Friends of Syria conference that's going on in Turkey, I believe tomorrow, where the United States, a bunch of Arab countries, uh, Turkey obviously, and like 70 other countries are going to get together to figure out how to help the Syrian rebels. I got to I gotta do another podcast on that. In that same light, Saudi Arabia announced earlier today that they think it's their duty to arm the Syrian rebels against fellow Arab leader... Uh, President al-Assad of Syria. It's like, what, 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 what? Uh, in other news that I'm going to do a podcast about this week too, uh, invest all of your money in defense industries. People making weapons, bombs, tanks, and airplanes are making more money than ever thought possible. Just because the U.S. wars that the U.S. is involved in are currently wrapping up and ending, don't think for a second that defense spending is because... It is gangbusters for people buying defense, military, and offensive military equipment all over planet Earth. Not even the United States. We're a major provider. And all this stuff is somehow related to what I really wanted to rant about today in other news. April 1st, happy April Fool's Day. Hillary Clinton uh, yesterday was in Saudi Arabia to attend, or maybe it was in Kuwait. I don't even know where the meeting was, but here's what the meeting was. <laughs> It was the inaugural, that means first, uh, United States slash GCC Strategic Cooperation Forum. I think this is a gigantic huge deal that I pulled myself out of my deathbed, out of my sick bed to come to report on. I think this is a huge big deal that nobody in the United States is reporting on. They're all squawking about taxes and Obamacare and all this other nonsense. This is what's really at, my friends. If you want to understand what's going on in the world, well, what, okay, what about Rachel? What the hell's the GCC? The GCC is the Gulf Cooperation Council, okay? So who's in that? It's a bunch of Arab states. In fact, it's the core Arab states. In fact, I'd say it's the real Arab states that have the real Arab power on the Arabian Peninsula. It is, of course, the major power, Saudi Arabia, but also six smaller states in that area, uh, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, the UAE, and Oman. It really is pretty much the entire Arabian Peninsula minus Yemen. And we might want to stop for just a second and ask the question, okay, there's an Arab League already, right? Boy, that's right. I've taught you this stuff. The Arab League has like 27 members across North Africa and the Middle East and beyond. And uh, it's a big entity. This is something smaller. We're only talking about six members, the core the Arabian Peninsula. So who's not in it? Uh, well, Yemen, troublemaker down in the Arabian Peninsula. They're not in it. Syria, troublemaker to the north. Uh, they're Arab, but they're not in it. Even next door neighbor Egypt, another kind of center of Arab power. They're not in it. And of course, no one else in North Africa. I really am looking at this as kind of a sleek, smaller, kind of real Arab power core entity that is becoming increasingly powerful and increasingly important and that's what I'm raging about right now because nobody's even talking about it. So Hillary Clinton went and visited th this uh, uh, GCC, the Gulf Cooperation Council. By the way, all my Arab friends out there, all my Saudi friends, all my Kuwaiti friends, of which there are many uh, in and around campus and out there on planet Earth, could you please chime in and tell me what you know and what you think about the GCC? This is an entity that just kind of it's just under the rug. Nobody's paying attention to it, but here, let me get back to why I'm raging about it. It was started back in 1981, so it's been around for a while. And again, people are like, what? I've never heard of that. Yeah, you haven't. You're going to, though. <clears throat> now, it was kind of originally, I think, kind of like a trade-ish block thing. But it also, from the in 
onset was supposed to be like a common market with a defense planning council component. Defense planning council. So immediately you have like, okay, it's kind of a common market, but these countries don't trade that much with each other, I don't think. All they make is oil. They import everything from every place else. But the defense planning thing is really cool. It really is starting to look like something like NATO. They actually have unified operational procedures, and I'm talking military. Uh, they have joint military training across all GC and a joint military curriculum or what they tr are going to do and uh, uh, regional GCC planning of their military and what they're going to train and how they're going to interact. This is looking, again, to me, terribly important in a day and age, that being now, uh, where not only have there been conflicts all around the Gulf region, but of course we're looking at perhaps some big ones coming up with a possible showdown with Iran. And here you got the GCC that, for whatever reason, the United States, for the first time ever, decided to send Secretary of State Hillary Clinton to have a joint inaugural meeting with the entire council. Now, what do you think they talked about? <laughs> well, I'd love to be a fly on the wall of that meeting, but I can guess without being a fly. <clears throat> the United States, with no reservations, sells hell tons of weaponry to these six countries. I've reported on this in other podcasts, as the Plat Avenger has. Saudi Arabia has been on a, a, a military buying binge for a decade. They have been spending something on the order of 9, 10, 11, and 12 percent of their GDP on military arms every year. They are one of the fastest militarizing countries on planet Earth if you look at just spending, okay? Now, they're way behind. I mean, they're, they're it's, they may be spending billions, but they're not anywhere close to the United States. They're not even anywhere close to a France, probably. Although, I, maybe if their shipment of, of white surrender flags came in, maybe. Oh, sorry, I couldn't help it, France. Uh, but they are getting there. And I thought this whole time, oh, well, it's the Saudis that are arming. And the U.S. is helping them. And it is mostly U.S. arms they're buying. Although, although you got to think the Ruskies are in there selling them planes and MiGs and, and uh, Kalashnikovs as well. So I thought this whole time, well, it's the Saudis. They're arming to the teeth. The U.S. is going to help them do that because the U.S. and the Sauds are big allies. And we're going to arm the Sauds uh, to beef up defense against a possible stronger Iran. Oh, 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 I was wrong on that. The Kuwaitis have been buying stuff like Matt as well. So has the UAE. In fact, this whole GCC group has been actively investing in offensive and defensive, mostly defensive, but some offensive weaponry. On top of that, the U.S. is... And the U.S. is supplying a lot of it, but not all of it. What they talked about at this meeting was also a U.S.-supplied regional missile defense system. Bam! Here we are back to missile defense. I'm not going to rage about it. I promise I'm too ill to get into a, my blood pressure up too high. But this mythical beast, missile defense, that does not work. I'm sorry, Department of Defense. I'm sorry to all the advocates who think it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I think the idea is great that you have a bunch of missiles that can shoot down Missiles that are being shot by your enemy. Great idea. Don't think it works yet. If it did, why do we have any problems with Israel? Why do we even care about uh, uh, wars between countries? If the missile defense shields worked, they would take care of all these things. They don't, okay? But they're working on the technologies. I'm sure they're getting better. And so Hillary Clinton was there saying, yes, let's start supplying you guys with a whole bunch of radar systems and missiles for a greater and a coordinated missile defense system of the GCC. <clears throat> this stuff is fascinating. I Again, maybe you don't care. It's fascinating. Here's why it's fascinating. You can kind of start to see who's going to be conducting the conflicts of the future. The United States certainly will be there for their Saudi allies. Of course, we're allies with Qatar. We're allies with all the GCC. That's why Hillary Clinton was there. We would come protect any of these entities, any of these countries, if need be. But we don't want to have to keep doing that. And so instead of the United States going in, and if a possible war with Iran uh, breaks out any given time now, the United States doesn't want to have to conduct this war because then you have a bunch of foreigners, infidels, going in and killing Islamic people, and that's just bad press. It's the kind of bad press that the Ayatollahs and President Aminadjad in Iran have been spouting uh, for years, as was Osama bin Laden and all other radicals. They're like, oh, it's the Western infidels in here just killing uh, Islamic people. Uh, the United States would much rather have a situation where the GCC and all our other allies in the uh, area, including Turkey, uh, they would be armed to the teeth. They would have a missile defense shield. That if the Iranians ever did anything, perhaps the missile defense shield would work and then it would shoot down an Iranian missile. 
And if an open conflict starts, you have a well-trained, well-equipped GCC force there in the Gulf that's going to take care of it. Yes, the United States will help. But what what's so great about it from the United States perspective is they're on the ground. They're there. They're Islamic. They know the territory. It's their home ground, their home turf. And they can be the ones to invite the United States in to assist if a regional war breaks out. That's way better than the United States having to come in and saying, yes, we're here to save the day and we're going to blow up whoever... Uh, uh, is the flavor of the week this week that we don't like. So again, this GCC to me, and I'm gonna—I was trying to make this brief. It's already gone on 10 minutes. I think it's an inc increasingly powerful entity. It's been around since 1981, but it's getting a lot more teeth. A lot more arms are flowing into this place. A missile defense shield uh, that's going to be sponsored by the United States. And again, you ain't heard shit about this, have you? This has been quiet. And I knew the Sauds were arming. I knew the Kuwaitis were arming. I had no idea it was a regional cooperation organization arming, which is what is going on. The GCC, by the way, is also important and under the radar in that um, I think they're kind of like the real kind of power core of the Arab League now. Again, all the GCC countries are Arab, but so are like 20 other countries that are in the Arab League. But Syria has never been a real friend uh, of the Arab leaders in the GCC. Uh, Hazi Mubarak was, but he's now gone. Muammar Gaddafi was never a friend. He's an Arab, but never a friend of the Arabs in the GCC. Yemen has been problematic. And so add all this up, what's going on right now with the GCC, with what ha the GCC has done just in the last couple years, and that is uh, the GCC actually backed the United States and Western powers for uh, Libyan intervention. They said, yes, we're the ones that we say go throw uh, a Muammar Gaddafi out of office. He's a nutbag. None of us ever liked him anyway. It was the GCC countries that actually supplied, some GCC countries supplied some helicopters and some men and some money for the NATO effort in Libya. That was widely not reported. Uh, the GCC troops actually sent troops, GCC countries sent troops to Bahrain uh, about a year ago when there was a Shia uprising in Bahrain against the government. The Sauds sent across tanks across the bridge to support their Arab king brothers in Bahrain, but G other GCC countries helped out in that effort as well. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> it was the GCC that for years has been pushing uh, for the now former president of Yemen to step down. And, and that was another thing that was kind of probably in league with the United States and others. Uh, uh, Saleh, President Saleh of Yemen, who was there for 30 years and all this turbulence and turmoil and civil war has been breaking out uh, for the last year and a half hardcore. The GCC countries are the ones that had been paving the way. And I remember reporting on this, but not really thinking about it. I'm like, oh, the GCC is doing something. Yeah, yeah, the Gulf Corporation Council, they're throwing their two cents in saying, yes, that President Salah should step down. And now in hindsight, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. They were the main entity telling him to step down. So here you had a bunch of other Arab countries saying, dude, Salah, fellow Arab president, back up. Step down, dude. They were behind the wheels behind this, the curtains the whole time trying to grease the wheels for uh, President Saleh to step down, which, of course, he eventually did. Uh, and I kind of want to end with this. Uh, the GCC probably is supporting more active engagement over the Iranian situation. To me, and this is a judgment call, um, you got to think that these countries are not happy with the rise of Iranian power. And so they're forming up their core of power to counter Iranian power. And I just got to think that it's the GCC countries collectively that are saying, hey, yeah, we wouldn't mind if Israel bombed uh, Iran. Uh, and yeah, we wouldn't mind if the United States has to take action against Iran. And yeah, we might help out if anybody takes action against Iran. It is very bizarre, actually, that you have this almost ironic alignment uh, in the Gulf of the GCC countries, hardcore Arab countries, hardcore Islamic countries, where Islam was born in Saudi Arabia, these countries that are somehow in this fight aligned with Israel against a potential nuclear armed or threatening Iran. Start to see things piecing together here. So I just wanted to do a quick podcast on this big, I think, historic meeting between the United States, the inaugural meeting between the United States and this GCC, an entity that has not been heard of by very many people, has not been terribly active in the public eye, hasn't perhaps affected history too much up to this point, but I think you're getting ready to see all of that change. To tie this back in, all these countries are arming heavily. This is all big, good news and big bu uh, business for American defense industries. So the U.S. is all happy about this, and the U.S. is, of course, going to supply with missile defense stuff as well. 
You got Patriot missiles that are now in all these countries, at least in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and I believe UAE. Um, and they're buying more all the time. And to wrap it up with what I was raging about at the beginning of this, tomorrow you have a Friends of Syria meeting happening in Turkey with the GCC. Uh, uh, 70 countries in total, but the GCC will all certainly be there. And in, before that meeting even starts, again, it came out today that Saudi Arabia said, we actually think it's in, we think it's our duty. It was we, the Saudi Arabian government, or perhaps this was a GCC thing, but the king of Saudi Arabia said it. We think it's our duty to arm the Syrian rebels who are fighting against uh, the al-Assad regime in Syria. So you're like, what? these guys are getting assertive. That's the first time you've seen any Arab groups getting assertive. The Arab League has largely done nothing for decades. They've kind of gotten their act together and been a little more assertive in the last year. But now you've got this finer-tuned, smaller-honed Arab power, thrust of power in the GCC, which the United States has a very big vested interest in making this group strong, potent, forceful, and heavily armed. Because we're all about, of course, defending our friends, I say our, the United States defending its friends and allies in the region, but also keeping the region stable so all that great oil keeps flowing out of where? The Gulf region, right where the GCC group is. Kablamo! That's what I'm talking about. Keep your eye on the GCC. The GCC is the Arab power place to be. And I'm out.